Alright. So this is a volume of spheres notes. We also gonna cover surface area of spheres in here too. We covered that a little bit before though. <coughs> gonna feel like I'm moving fast, but this is easy, so we should be moving fast. <coughs> First thing is parts of a sphere. These arrows are pointing to different parts of the sphere. Make sure you got headphones out too, I shouldn't have to tell you that. <coughs> this top left arrow is pointing at this uh part of the sphere. Everybody should know what that is, it's the diameter. top right arrow is pointing at this part of the sphere. Everybody should know what that is as well. It's the radius. Bottom left arrow is pointing at that center point. That's exactly what we call it. Center point of the sphere. Or center. We'll call it center too. <clears throat> last thing, this last bottom right arrow is pointing at this belt going around the sphere. This is what we call the great circle. <clears throat> a sphere itself is a solid in which each point is equidistant from a center point. And saying each point that you can make on a part of a sphere will be equidistant from the center point. Meaning I stretch out any way I want and make a radius pretty much. That's what they're saying. Any direction I want to go I can stretch out and make a radius on this sphere. <clears throat> uh, the great circle slices the sphere into two uh, hemispheres. I think of that as the equator. <coughs> Y'all should be able to reference that. That's what the great circle is. Alright. Now I have a uh, sphere, volume, and surface area formulas. You should be familiar with the bottom one um, surface area of a sphere, 4 times pi r squared. We already talked about that earlier when we did lateral and surface area figures. <clears throat> the new one is uh, 4 equals 4 over 3 pi r to the third power. This is volume of a sphere. If I want to find volume of a sphere, I'm using this formula right here. Now, this one, since it's a volume formula, will be on your reference sheet. And this is how it'll look on the reference sheet, too. So there's three formulas y'all going to see on the reference sheet. <clears throat> Should I write in my hand? Yeah. On the reference sheet, you're going to see three formulas. You're going to see volume equals capital B times H. Then you see volume equals one third, capital B times H. Then you're going to see this new one, volume equals four over three, power squared, power to the third, excuse me. Those are the three volume formulas they're going to give you. Those go for about seven, eight, nine shapes. I don't know how many. Well, probably more than that. <coughs> you got to be able to recognize which one goes which because they will not label it for you. And they ain't going to say out to the side of this formula, sphere. And they ain't going to say out to the side of this one, prism. You got to know what to use for what. But y'all should know this first one, capital B times H, is for prisms and cylinders. Y'all should know the second one, one third B times H, capital B times H, is for your uh, pyramids and cones, which y'all just got finished doing. And then you should know this one here now is for a sphere. <coughs> I said the only ones you're going to be given. None of the surface area stuff will be given to you. One and two, find the volume of each figure below, round to the nearest hundreds. I always start by writing my formula. That is the expectation. I hope you figure that out by now. If I don't see formulas on y'all stuff, I'm marking it wrong. Even if you set the whole problem up right. <clears throat> Volume equals four over three. We can still treat the three like we've been treating it before. I'm gonna just keep that four on top. On the bottom, I'm gonna move the three in the middle. <clears throat> times three point one four times my radius, which is seven times seven times 7. On top, I would do all that multiplication, and then I would divide by 3. Now, one kid another thing is like, can I just do 4 divided by 3 first? Yeah, you sure can if you want. Do 4 divided by 3, and then you can do all that if you want. But I just do it this way. 4 times everything on top, then divide by 3 on the bottom. Either way, you should get the right answer. We round it to the nearest hundreds. I'm moving fast, so whenever you get it, you can spit it out. This is inches cubed. 
<clears throat> Next one. Volume equals four over three power to the third. I adjust a little bit. Four on top. Three on the bottom. Times three point one four. <clears throat> times what's my uh, what's my radius, Chris? Chris. Thank you. Sixteen point five. You're going to get a big number on this one. Don't be scared. Spit it out. Good. Thank you, sir. This is centimeters cute. So that's volume of a regular sphere. As long as you know the formula, what you will be presented with, you should be good on that one. It shouldn't be hard for y'all to calculate that. <coughs> surface area. Remember, on a sphere, you can only find surface area because it doesn't have a base. That's on a sphere, though, not for a hemisphere. <coughs> So on this one, find the surface area of each figure below and round to the nearest thousands. So we round it to the nearest thousands on this one. That's three decimal places if we can. First one, surface area, four times power r squared. So surface area equals four times 3.14 times 2.8 times 2.8. Let's get it. Nope. Oh, what now? Surface area, so it's meter square. It's 470. I think in the calculator they said last year they saw 47, I think 4 or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So just drop that four off, leave it as four seven on. Uh next one, surface area four power squared. Chris, what's our radius? Just checking. Okay, keep you on point. <coughs> No zero. Don't put one unless they already had one there. No point. <coughs> that one automatically rounded itself to the hundred, so. Okay, number two. <coughs> On the back, uh, hemisphere. That's half of a sphere, obviously. <coughs> formulas for that. Look at the adjustments that are made for the volume formula. It's easy to see how they made the adjustment. It went from 4 over 3 to 2 over 3. That should make sense to y'all. <coughs> it basically cut that fraction in half, yeah? <coughs> what may not make sense to you is the surface area formula. It went from 4 pi r squared to 3 pi r squared. 
But we talked about this. Anybody remember why I explained to you it's three instead of two pi r squared for a hemisphere? Which, that's kind of the opposite reason of why it does have a base. That's why it's three instead of uh, two. Like if I was just to slice that, uh, say if it was a basketball, if I was just to slice it in half, and then actually to find um, surface area, yeah, it'd be two pi squared because it's just an open, like, hemisphere, half a circle. But with these hemispheres, they have a cap on them. To close that open space off, they will put an actual circular cap on that, almost like a lid, basically. Think about a lid being on a bowl. That's that extra circle that comes in right there. That's why it's three pi r squared for surface area. I've explained it to you a couple of times, and I hope it clicks into your brain. <coughs> All right. Volume first. Volume equals 2 over 3 pi times radius to the third. <coughs> Adjusting how it looks. 2 on top, 3 on the bottom. Times 3.14 times 5 times 5 times 5. We're rounding to the nearest tenths. Two sixty one point seven. Thank you, sir. Six kilometers cube. Volume equals two over three power to the third. Volume equals two. On the bottom, divided by three, three point one four times uh, Chris, what's our radius? <coughs> so leave it off. Well, I guess we could put it there, but I mean. The number that you're going to get is 1,526.0 something something else, 04. You can just leave it like this. I mean, you can put point zero if you want to be a kind of a waste of time, though. All right, so that's volume of a hemisphere. Now, find the surface area of each figure below. Round to the nearest corner, surface area. 3 power squared. <clears throat> 3 times 3.14. Chris, what's our radius? Gotcha. Chris, what's our radius? Uh huh. Caught you slipping. Thought I was asking about the same kind. Thank you. 1,846.32. This is yard squared. And one more. I'm going fast because all this is straightforward. It's just you plugging and chugging the formula. <coughs> Can't do this, then you shouldn't be in here. Chris, what's our race? Number eight. Hey, Chris.
All that's easy. What you need to be able to do is problems like the one at the bottom, like the ones at the bottom. <coughs> the goal is to be able to do this stuff down here. First one says find the surface area of the figure below. <coughs> so let me help you understand first. This is a composite figure, so it's two figures put together to create one. <coughs> one, what two shapes do you see? Good. One says you see a cone plus a hemisphere. Now one asks us for surface area. But to give a surface area of this composite figure one, you can only give what you can see. What I mean is like anything that's not shown because it's connected, you can't give that. So for this figure, I can only give for surface area of this cone, I can only give the curved lateral area around the cone. I couldn't give the base because the base is connected to the hemisphere. Those two are connected together. I wouldn't be able to see that if y'all understand what I'm saying. Yes? Since they're connected, you won't be able to see that part. <clears throat> Same thing as far as the base on the uh, hemisphere. I won't be able to see that either. So I'm going to exclude that when I do my uh, surface area for this figure too. <clears throat> so basically, if what I need for surface area of this composite, I need the lateral area around the cone. And I gave you a formula for that. Anybody remember the formula for lateral area around the cone? Thank you. Pi times R times slant height. <coughs> I'll make the adjustment for you. It's slant height, not length. But I get it. At least you remembered it. <coughs> for the hemisphere, uh, we need the surface area, but the surface area we can see, which is basically this lateral area down here. What adjustment would I make to the formula to uh, do this area of this hemisphere? Anybody? Somebody say something smart. Somebody say something smart last period. How would I adjust the surface area formula for a hemisphere to help me on this problem down here? That's the regular formula. I don't need that. I just said we can't see either circular base, the one for the cone or for the hemisphere. We can't see either one of those. What adjustment would you make to the hemisphere formula for surface area to help you out on this problem? Yeah, you're not as smart as I thought y'all were. Nothing from the gallery over there? Is she blank over there right Y'all still ain't said nothing to me, and I don't sound like y'all right. What? I ain't got all day. Shh. I just told you up here, a surface area form for a regular hemisphere is 3 pi r squared. <clears throat> Since we're not going to include this circular base, I'm going to take one of my circles out. And I'm going to make it 2 pi r squared instead. Jesus, nobody could come up with that, eh? <laughs> I mean, people would. Girl said it plain out last period. She wasn't guessing. She explained it to everybody. <clears throat> Alright, before we start, we need radius in both of these formulas, so we might as well find that first. Chris, what's our radius? Huh? 4.5. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> All right. So I'm writing everything out first, and then I'm going to solve. 3.14 times my radius, which is 4.5, times my slant height, which is 13, plus 2 times 3.14 times my radius again 4.5 squared so times 4.5 <clears throat> understand I'm going to zoom in for y'all too understand too 
it's still order of operations here. I need to save that addition for last. I need to do the multiplication on both sides first. I'm going to get both of those numbers. Then I'm going to add together. <clears throat> first, 3.14 times 4.5 times 13. 183.69. Thank you, sir. Plus, and then on the other side, 2 times 3.14 times 4.5 times 4.5. One twenty-seven point seventeen. <clears throat> to get my surface area of this figure, I need to add those together. Okay. It told me eighty-six last class. Yes. They ain't wrong. Y'all wrong. So that's a surface area problem <coughs> of a composite. You don't need to be able to do those kind of problems. We're going to find that. Nope. Number 10. The Henleys have a silo for their farm to store grain. Assuming the entire space is used, what is the maximum amount of grain that the silo can hold? This problem didn't specify to you surface area of all. You're going to figure that out for yourself. It's not hard to figure out, though. They want to know how much grain a silo can hold. This surface area or volume. Yes, yeah, you should see. You should be saying volume. <clears throat> All right. So we're doing volume of what two shapes? One. Volume of a cylinder plus a hemisphere. We need to be able to write our formulas out. Volume of a cylinder starts out volume equals capital B times H. I change capital B to what for a cylinder? For a cylinder, what I change capital B to? Shouldn't take out that long. Power R squared times height. And then hemisphere, that formula is what it is. Volume equals 2 over 3 power to the third. So, we need radius. Make sure we got that. Chris, what's our radius? Radius is 11. <clears throat> then after that, we also need a height for our cylinder. What's the height of our cylinder? Nope. Mind you got to explain yourself. Hold on, make sure you're listening. I got you. Hold on. She's saying my radius can stretch out this way. It can be 11 feet this way. I feel you. 11 minus 45 or 45 minus 11. Give me 34 feet, which is the height of my cylinder. Y'all follow that? Plug in. Volume equals 3.14 times 11 times 11 times my height, which was You should see that in the
on the other side. You're going to get a long decimal. Do not round that decimal. Shh. Hold that decimal in your calculator. And then add this other number to it. <clears throat> and then we'll round to the nearest hundreds. It don't tell us to, but we'll do it anyway. But hold that decimal so we can all get the same exact answer. If you did it right, you should see that.